All right, folks, we're back. And uh, so, yeah, looking into what was going on, um, my CPU was maxing out at 100%. Normally, I'm having memory leak errors, and that's the problem. But for some reason, my CPU is being overused today, and I don't know what's causing that. So what I've done is turn I've turned off the... Um, the Chrome extension. I've, I've shut down all browsers, so I, I can't see Twitch chat right now. I don't have Chrome, I don't have Firefox, i got nothing open except for XSplit and this. And we'll see if that improves the frame rate in game. Uh, if that's what was eating up all my computer, CPU, I don't know. But there's something wrong. I'll probably, I was talking to Zyme during the break. I'll probably just reformat tomorrow since we're not doing anything in the next couple days anyways. But, uh, so it's not real, what this will mean is I'm going to have to eat you to run ads today because I can't have the browser open to do that. Oh. Uh, okay. No, I, I believe shoutouts and stuff will still be possible because the alerts thing is built into XSplit. It's not done through like a screen region. So if you guys like resub or donate, like it'll still show up on stream, I believe. I'm not sure if anyone wants to test that. A couple hundred bits here. But anyways, uh, it should still show up on the stream, but I won't be able to read things. So Did we shout out the 1,000 bits earlier. Dove and Wolf? Yes. I think that's the last thing I shout out before I went to break. Actually, can you hit the replay button and see if that so I can see if it pops up on XSplit still, even though I've got everything closed? What? Okay, the repeat button. Yeah. Gotcha. There you go. Yep. Still shows up and still plays twice for some stupid reason. Actually, I wonder if I remove it from this scene, if it'll play on the other one. I'm gonna, I'm temporarily removing it from this scene, guys, to test things. Because it always plays that double echo sound, and I can't, for the life of me, figure out why. But anyways, uh, back on point. We are back to StarCraft. It's the first semifinals of two, and it's going to be a TVT. As Alive managed to beat Nurchio, and Keen, I guess, defeated Optimus, so it'll be a Korean TVT. Thus, we've moved to the Korean server for it. Right. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Other semi still not determined. Yeah, I'm actually, I don't know, like, sort of versus Neeb could be really cool if that's what it comes down to. Oh, no, sure. I guess I will also have to temporarily remove the stuff in the top right of the screen because I won't be able to update this stuff as that's all broken. So it feels bad, man. One sec, guys. Know that we love your faces and we thank you kindly for your resubs and your donations. But as we're having CPU problems today, we're going to just try and accommodate accordingly. But all right, game number one in a best of five. Not a best of three as we are in the semifinals for the Corsair Cup season one finals powered by Twitch. In the bottom right side, we got the blue Terran. It is none other than Keen. In the bottom left is the red Terran. He is alive. Mother of God, I just realized I'm gonna have to stay on point and talk about the game if I can't see Twitch chat. Like what? This is absurd. This is a mark your your calendars, everybody. Not, I'm not... actually. As much as people do want to give us grief for that, like I feel when it comes down to actually needing to be professional, we do a really great job. Like the Lima League Year Finals, I thought we nailed it. We had like no access to Twitch chat really. It was like, kind of on a second monitor. It was like ten feet to the right, like <laughs> angled funny. Yeah. Like when oh, it comes yeah. down I, to it, I think easy. we can nail it. I mean, you did a great job at Nation Wars. Of course, I did. Court. Shut the. F <laughs> I was actually uh, I was gonna do a video about it, but it kept on messing up. So I've kind of given up on the idea. But while doing the video, I had this bright idea to like get all the clips of our live events that I've well that I've ever done, and you know a lot of them were with you. And um, so I went back to like even searching for the MLG cast I did in like 2013. Oh lord. Uh, yeah, when I went to the studios in New York because I was already there for IAM New York, and hmm. I did not have the greatest time looking back through all those things, but I thought it was it was still a, like really interesting to set them side by side. There was that, then there was Hell to Go Time, then there was Home Strike Up. I actually couldn't find any of the Home Strike Up VODs that we did, so that was weird. But uh, and then there was the uh, Dreamhack cast, and then and then uh, Alima League. And man, I uh, I need Nathaniel's stool for the Dreamhack cast. I was very short compared to you. <laughs> Well, that, uh, that is unfortunate. Yeah, the, the Home Star Cup ones are actually a little bit awkward, so we didn't actually have permission to upload them to YouTube, so they unfortunately just withered and died on Twitch, and we couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. So, 
Feels bad, man. There's a couple things like the Cactus Valley highlight clips out there, and that's about it. But I couldn't even find a picture though. Like I know there's pictures of us, but I tried really hard to Google image search it, and uh, oh, nothing came up. Maybe all those fit Europeans are like this fat Canadian. Oh, get him out of all our pictures. Delete them all. Although I don't know why they'd be French, so forget that accent. Yeah, I'm not sure where you're going with that. Anyways, uh, we do have the Cyclone coming out of Keen. I think this is a little bit expected. It's a little more unconventional, actually, to see this Widowmine coming out of Alive. But I also kind of like this a bit. A Widowmine doesn't one-shot a Cyclone by any means, but if it gets the hit on it, it severely damages it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the Cyclone is the safest answer to TVT right now, as it's, I guess it's always been, but in a different aspect nowadays with its new change. But the Widow Mine can technically be just as good or even better. I still, uh, it, I think the old Cyclone was better for that one trick pony to be your defense, but it didn't have any yeah. other presence like the new Cyclone does. So I'll take the well, trade off for sure. Yeah, it could never be offensive because it was so low health. Well, it could be, but it was like it was really a dangerous thing to do. At least it's, the its existence was offensive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but this new cyclone, like while its its health is a lot bigger, it actually can be a little more stable when you try and push out with low amounts of units. But that's why I wouldn't mind because it's be very good, is because it would just deter anyone who's being aggressive with their own cyclone. But it also means you can drop with it. So. Mm. Well, as the drop does potentially commence, there's a Viking. The cyclone's got lock on. I really don't think he's going to accomplish much with this. Uh, turning around right away might just be the only option. Yeah. Option. Uh, I could place that wooden mine somewhere kind of clever, like either in the middle of Newkirk Precinct or, you know, in a mineral line or something, and maybe even get like a freebie Viking. That would nope. be pretty good. Yeah. My actual personal preference is when you put it right outside. Well, this is a personal preference. This is in terms of what I think is good. I usually get caught a lot when it's right at the bottom of my ramp, at least when I'm playing, because I never think to look there. So, like, yeah, just pass. You know your opponent's going to walk on. Middle of the map over here is not too bad either. Anything rallied's likely to go through this, and they'll get a hit. Yeah. Oh, oh, tops off the medevac. Shout out to Alive for actually repairing his units. Man, not much else to talk about. No one really got aggressive in the early game. They both had the option, again, with the Cyclone. You can try and poke and prod, but once a tank comes out, then that's kind of done with. But until you have a certain amount of tanks, it's really not worth pushing out with that set of units either like two or three tanks you can but it's going to be dangerous against an opponent you know did a very similar build and they're gonna have similar units uh and then if you don't go with the tank push then it's kind of just waiting until stim maybe a drop but they both already know they went for vikings so i don't know if there'll be any drops <laughs> this is kind of the, the boring part of tbt where it's just about them ramping up and getting some some okay map presence with a couple of marines well, I would like to point out that I think this is actually not alive playing on Alive's account today. That's because city. of the Sim City. This barrack yeah, should have been above port. the starport, man. Yeah. Man, messed up. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know what we're making jokes to right now, Alive has been absolutely. Oh, that looks really weird. When I position the camera like this, it looks like there's two weapon upgrades in the production tab. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyways, uh, Alive's been doing some really nice Sim City with his buildings. Not super important, but just a little bit fun to note because he's been very meticulous actually but regardless of that nobody went for mech it's not an option anymore it feels bad man but more importantly nobody went for aggressive air like okay i get that there's a difference of a wind of mine versus a cyclone opening but nobody went for a banshee and more to the point nobody went ravens and i feel that having no raven presence in this is actually the real true oddity as whether it's one or yeah. maybe you go like innovation style and go two but Ravens and Auto Turrets have become such a big part of the matchup. And I don't just mean for worker harass, but hell, they're what let you position your tanks now in these unfavorable, aggressive fights. Yeah, that is kind of odd. Ravens are so, so good and usually worth setting off the uh, medevacs at least a little bit. But, no. Now they both have Sima plus one and a decent army. And Keen's even expanding behind this. Alive probably would too. Uh, but they're both going to meet in the middle of the map and kind of awkwardly awkwardly i don't like one of them's gonna have to disengage and go defensive and i guess that's keen oh no oh no well the stim did more damage than the cyclone did that's for certain <laughs> uh the scv just gonna poke around for a bit of a scout too which isn't a bad choice yeah i wish scvs made the sound roberto from futurama did when they attack I'm like yeah yeah <laughs> Well, gotta pick one, though. Ah, this is a problem, though. 
Because Keen is going to... Like, he's got scouting. The Marines are here to see this army come in, but he was out of position, and the tanks were sieged in the middle. So there was a very real chance he was not ready to take a defensive fight. But leaving one Marine forward, he sees the repositioning army. He also sees that third command center finishing up, and now Alive's got to consider, like, hey, I can start my third and be a little bit behind, or I can go super all in and just dedicate to two bases. It kind of feels like that's the direction he wants to head. Man, if he had Siege's tanks up on the high ground, he might have been able to get a cancel on that third. But now it's done, and Keen did try and protect it. So Alive's going to take on his own third, but it is a lot farther behind. He's got to find something to do. Keen tried a clever little drop, but Alive was appropriately rallying back at home. So not a big problem there. Uh, Keen has much better map presence. Like, oh, he has yeah. Marines everywhere. But Alive doesn't seem to care about it. I mean, the, the thing about these little marines, okay, it's a waste of a unit, sure, but it's also valuable scouting if you had caught the army moving out of that crucial moment. Like right here, this guy is sacrificial, but sees the army pushing in, so he knows not to unseize his tanks. He knows to stay, stay in this position, and frankly, you just you can't break this very easily. Drops go off once again on the other side of the map, but the rally should be more than enough to push that back. Yeah, the reinforcements have no problem over there. Well, Keen's trying to get some damage done, but he is really just purely the defensive. So Alive having a much later command center, I mean, it's it's not totally terrible. His positioning is better, and his army still has a little bit of a kick to it as well. He's going to grab some Vikings, too. This is actually really good, because Keen was just going to try and do Liberators. I don't think they knew each other were going to do that. It's unfortunate for Keen. I don't think there's any break in Keen. Not easily, at least. I mean, this is the this is the dynamic that the new tanks present that I'm actually not a fan of because you can't get better positioning. If, if your Terran opponent is set up like this, there's no dropping tanks into a better position. You can't really bait those Marines forward. This is where the combination of two different things come into play. Either Liberators, which we do see Keen going for to counter push alive, or alternatively Ravens. Because if Ravens are in the front line and they're dropping three to four auto turrets, it allows Alive's tanks to move forward and siege up. Whereas right now, if they do that, they're dead. Alep well, has three Vikings, but he's not bringing them forward quite yet. You didn't have to worry about Liberators. Yeah, I guess just patrolling one and then just build huh, the others. Okay, well. Oh well. Uh, so gonna go for ah. a Doom Drop. Very dangerous Ooh. thing to do, and but it gets you know, scouted. He's oh, he gets scouted right away. He can't go. Oh, oh, yeah, that's awkward. Nope, nope, nope. Alive is certainly falling behind, though. If he can't find something to do, it was his third command center initially, but that was kind of band-aided. It wasn't such a big deal, but these upgrades are a very big deal. He's gonna be so far ahead. Uh, well, these are like sacrificial, I suppose. Yeah, but they do draw the attention of the army, but it's not the whole army, unfortunately. So we do have all those medevacs now flying to the right side. There's no sensor towers, actually, which is kind of funny to see. But the army's here, dropping on top oh, of it. This could hurt. be horrible. Yeah, it's not worth it all. In fact, he can't even drop as much as he would want. He kind of got stuck in a place where the medevacs literally would not let him drop. So he loses all of that army for not much from Keen. And he's going to try another attack to the left side. But Keen still has his army there. Oh, is... that was uh, that was quite the throw, frankly. Well, I mean, it was like literally throwing units away. Yeah, it's like alive with the lead. <laughs> I will say, like in a very at least situation. Oh, come on, man! I was about to say you got your tanks out alive, but then that happens. <laughs> this is going badly though. Alive, I think at this point, wow. just, he doesn't know what's going on. He's caught on the other side of the map. I think Keen's got it. Yeah, I, I do think it's game, which really sucks because Keen was purely defensive. Like, besides this one drop which is being handled, no problem. Alive, you know, had he known how Keen was going to play, could have gotten a well-timed through command center. He probably could have gotten to a fourth base. If he had kept up on his upgrades, that would have been a problem. And he just would have controlled the map and, you know, waited Keen out. But instead, he felt the pressure to continue pushing in. Well, I think a big part of that, too, was, like, that third base, if Keen hadn't gone for that third, GG's. If Keen hadn't gone for that third as early as he did, Alive might not have felt that same pressure, but... For him, it was literally like, oh, I'm I'm behind. Now I got to do something. I have to make something happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate. Also, dude, your hair is doing that cool thing again. Maybe not like full body, but like... I feel, did you ever watch up. Did you ever watch Captain Planet when you were growing up? Yes, I did. There's like that one villain. She had like the hair like blonde. She's like over her eyes like that. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, I was going to say I'm doing kind of the scene look right now. I don't mean to. The scene look? Like, can you can you just, like, drag your bangs so they're covering, like, one of your eyes? 
Does anyone remember the name of this villain? I don't remember her name, the villainess or whatever. Zomgrub's got that total vibe going on right now. <laughs> With our powers combined. All right, uh, do we know the next map yet or? They still pick him. All right, so it's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be a live's pick, so he might actually host it. Good guy alive actually uses the map mod and does things uh, as observers would prefer. But I've, I've yeah. managed to get Twitch chat open on my phone so what's up, guys? Time to be a terrible caster again. <laughs> Stop. Although, is, I, I don't use the Twitch app often enough. Is there no way to pause the video player? Because I don't actually care about watching the video. You can put chat only on. Where, where's that? Oh, chat only. Neat. Yeah, that's what I was doing when I was watching streams. I'm waiting. I, I, I mean, I, I use this when I'm in bed to watch people, but I never really like... Watch it's, people. I, how else are you gonna phrase that, right? Like, oh, I, I didn't tune in for Zombie, we tuned in for the StarCraft, right? Like, ugh. No, okay, buddy. No, but yeah, so usually it's like, I got fat fingers, the phone's too small, I'm not typing in chat, I don't even have to worry about this, like, at all. Like, I don't know. The only thing I do. All right, I'll let me join off you. Uh, where's Emil? I invited you, I invited both of you. Okay. I just didn't see him in the chat channel, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah, he's on the chat channel. He's on my friends list. Nice. Uh, because I don't have things open, what about the brackets? Did uh, Sword of Inferior get a winner yet? No. No? Oh, wow. That's that's quite a series if that's still going on. But yeah. uh, I imagine it can't go longer than a best of five TVT, so I think we'll have some time. But it looks like Proxima Station was the map selected by Alive. Again, just that reminder that this is a best of five, not a best of three, as we are in the semifinals. Correct. And all right, swap of the names on the overlay. There we go. In the bottom left, he unfortunately died in game number one, making him pick this map. In the bottom left, we got the blue Terran player alive. In the top right, as the red Terran, he is keen. Of course, this is that map that is above a plan. I, I really hope as we see more maps and like map contests happen, so if we see more cool backgrounds like this, I mean, this clearly doesn't affect the players, but I just really appreciate that extra level of detail. I think it's cool. This could be the most garbage map in the world, because I think this looks beautiful in the background. I'd say this is a great map. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far. I so far have enjoyed this map though, just if we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, not it's- just for it, this is definitely not a garbage map. I should clear that up real quick. I was just saying like, if type thing. Cause this map has produced some pretty interesting games and I'm still waiting for like that match with Bly or somebody who proxies behind the rocks. who like tears in through the back door type thing. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. <laughs> Maybe. The map is way too big. So my, my thoughts on this though, right? With spine crawlers especially are back in the day when people do like the overgrowth of the gold and they'd have to tear through rocks and slowly crawl across and still make that work. Hey, why did they tear through rocks and overgrowth? Because you take the, the, the gold and there's those rocks in the middle, right? Oh, those ones. Oh, yeah. So my thoughts are, while it's not the same dynamic, the game's changed a lot since then, yada, yada, yada. The idea Even is that then. that worked. So there's, in my mind, potential. No. I'm not saying it is or isn't going to work until we see it in action. I'm going to be so bold as to say, even with the likes of Bly in the world, that there's no way. It's too far. It, the hatch would start too late. Uh, they'd scout your lack of hatchery. Before you actually did anything with it and you couldn't mine from it either which is the one thing that was really good about overgrowth is that you just gotta make a couple of drones if you really wanted that's true you have so, the gold base i'm gonna be that on. fucking bold and if proxima station ends up being in the map pool for you know more than one season then it's gonna get increasingly risk riskier i'm gonna stick with my guns <laughs> all right well alive by the way sneaks up here and i'm gonna guess this is a proxy called, starport oh that's why it's called proxima station because you got a proxy on it it's so big uh, stop <laughs> No, you stop. You leave those quality of low-hanging fruit jokes <laughs> to Rifkin, okay? Don't no. go plucking my fruits and sell them at a market. That's my territory. Step <laughs> off. But, no, this is actually kind of cool. I, I love that this will likely be a Liberator first. We've been seeing this come out a lot. This is a map that I can certainly see a little bit of Liberator usage, but not totally abusive. There's plenty of space behind the mineral lines. But... If this was something else, like if this was uh, the reactor on the factory at home and there was like actually a Hellion drop on the way or something, I would get super hyped and su I think that would be a really cool move. 
but unfortunately i don't know i feel like especially with two cyclones coming out the limitation of the liberator it's very oh it, well it's limited frankly it's a liminator <laughs> limited raider <laughs> it sounded really dumb <laughs> it, it absolutely did <laughs> uh well the two like even with two cyclones right they still do pretty garbage anti-air it should be enough like especially if they catch the liberator before it's sieged up Sieged up, it might be a mild annoyance, but this is not going to be the damage that a live really would have hoped for. I mean, there's there's two sides of this, right? Like, one, yeah, you could proxy and they wouldn't expect it to a large map. Like, why would you possibly do it? But on the other side, if it doesn't work, you know, you just give up a, a really easy macro map trying to do this. So, I, I don't know. The, the follow-up's going to be Banshees, which is, like, a lot scarier, but should also be predicted by Keen. This Liberator is obviously too fast to not be proxied. And if you're gonna proxy a starport, you're gonna do, you're gonna do something else too. All right, well the oh, Liberator sets up and it's blowing the SCVs away, but the other side of the map, I mean, two Cyclones versus two Cyclones, a live of the Concave at the top of this would be better off, but of course he's gonna lose depots and that sucks. Also, thank you so much to mobile user, Dr. Blight was who I was thinking of. You are correct, sir. There you go. Well, because Keen went aggressive with the Cyclones, that Liberator did a lot of damage. It's still doing damage. It's a nine mining. And uh, if the Banshee came in or... Oh, this is a problem, though. Whatever he's gonna get. The Cyclones targeting not the other Cyclones for a moment was an issue, but Keen comes in with a third Cyclone, uh -oh, and that's, that's a little too cyclones. much. Yeah. It's not gonna be enough. <laughs> and that shut down so much back at home. There's not even enough Marines being produced right now to actually push this off. The Viking finally comes into play, but this did a lot of damage, not just to the actual worker count, which yes, it did, but also like lost a lot of mining time. The command center only just recently finished up, so transferring over those SCVs. Income Wars went heavily in the favor of Alive this game, even though his command center is a little bit later to the party. Orkeen was not expecting a proxy and thought it was absolutely safe to go across the map. I really bit him in the butts. But I guess that's why you do it on an app like this. Yo, I just got an amazing email since I was on my phone looking at the Twitch chat. Oh my god, are you trying to get your zoot suit? Oh. Oh. <laughs> how did that make you sad? <laughs> did, because I really wanted to wear that to Olivia's <laughs> wedding. And I forgot Sorry. about it. And now, <laughs> why would you bring that up? That's like a year ago, man. <laughs> that's bad my feelings. Best. Oh, wow. Okay, here's, here's the question. Is the new Viking DPS good enough to kill the tech lab in time? Uh, this... I think it'll finish. Yeah, Cloak will finish. Uh, but no, I just got approved for the apartment I applied for. Oh, cool. That's cool. Well, condo, I guess. No, it's not a suit, suit, but... That's a really nice place, and... Oh, I'll, I'll have to follow up on that after we're done with the game, clearly, but... Anyways, uh, another Banshee's gonna come out. The tech lab dying... Okay, it didn't deny Cloak, but it did shut down extra Banshee production. First one gets picked off pretty quickly. And with a Raven out, I don't think Cloak's even going to be that much of an issue. But as Alive continues to chip away at Keen, he is keeping him on even footing. Because his command center, again, with how late it was, he would have still fallen behind on workers. And especially mules. So I love this Banshee damage. Just a little bit of icing on the cake that was already a lot of damage done. But Alive's doing really good work with this proxy. Yeah. I did not expect it at all. How this many is... work is this in total kill? 17. Not bad. And of course, now he's busting the front door down with a lot of Cyclones. Is he gained? Uh, what does he have? He used the auto turrets already. Yeah, he's almost exactly. got another That's one. I'm like kind of concerned. I don't. I don't know though. Alive is still reinforcing. Is that gonna burn? Is that gonna burn? Oh, it's gonna burn. Oh, 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 boys! Oh, oh no! Oh, <laughs> so oh. close. That's huge though. Production being killed by the Marines going down is massive. Of course, the tank sets up, and an auto turret's gonna try and hold the line. These Cyclones did a great job of damage, but no high ground vision means the tank dies, oh, and awesome. Keen finds a way to defend, albeit very barely. That was super awkward. He should have definitely gotten one more shot in there, but... Okay, so, Kian, that's lucky for him. Uh, Alive really could have had the potential to just stop him from landing his third base, which is, again, adding more damage, but now it's... It is something where Kian's not going to have 3cc production. He's also going to actually be on a third base. Uh, Kian, I guess, getting a natural, ensuring that it wasn't just a one base all in, which I guess it could have been. It's like a danger of that, but... Now it now knows it's not. Starport finally made its way back home for Alive. That's certainly what you give up when you proxy it. We could have been building medevac at this point in time. Yeah, that, I guess that's a bit of a drawback, but being up 15 workers, and more importantly, his stim starts so much sooner. I didn't actually consider this until just now, but the barracks going down meant he had nothing to swap over to these tech labs. So when it comes down to it, it might not be a stim versus no stim game, but it might be a combat shields versus no combat shields game. And that's a no contest game. Yeah, that would be 
problematic. We'll see if it really is abused. There's a potential that Keen just has really solid defense and can buy even that amount of time. But it is, like, well, Proxima has this really easy natural and technically an easy third. It's not necessarily easy against drops. You know, like, it's not like a nice little triangle set up. There's a lot of back alleys and open airspace to let you remain base. So defending against a live who's really going to be looking for a weak spot, unless you have mass ag defense, is going to be very difficult. In fact, okay, he's already going to find this nice wide open area to abuse Keen. Yeah, uh, I'm really worried about this because Keen does have a lot of forces not where they need to be right now. I mean, this this is crazy because Keen tore Alive apart in game number one, but it feels like there's been a complete role reversal here. And if this drop actually gets off, like if it's not about getting the drop off dealing damage, but if you can actually get both the siege tanks out and in siege mode, oh, and he's gonna combo with another drop too. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna rip Keen in half. This is like time. This is like ancient oh. times where they would like torture somebody by tying them to like an arm to a different horse and sending the horses off in every direction. Yep. Thanks for that. That imagery, though. Uh, even these two cyclones coming in the front, if they would just walk up to the tanks and get in the dead zone, they'll kill both the tanks. Land, Viking, land. Nope. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Cyclones are pretty cool units, zombie grub. Try max sometime. <laughs> Damn. All right, so the main push gets pushed off. Okay, but the third base is compromised. The natural's compromised. The command center's actually going to go down. Oh, sh that's it. GG. Alive. He ties it up. One to one. <laughs> he had one extra horse pulling at a leg. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know what? We'll, just, we'll tie three of your limbs together. Just three. We'll, give you, we'll spare you the fourth. It's like a, it's like a, the world's most gruesome wishbone, I suppose. Make a wish. <laughs> oh God! Whoever gets the head. <laughs> All right. Well, how would the, that wouldn't be fair? Because how's the leg guy gonna get the head, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna go to a small commercial break. Just two minutes. We'll be back with game number three when we return. Thank you guys for watching the Corsair Cup powered by Twitch. All right, folks. We're back. Thank you for watching that break. I just really need the extra minute to go email and respond that yes I'd like to move forward with the paperwork for the place. I'm super excited. Uh I'm mostly 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 excited though because the place is like a 3 minute walk from Subway, okay? <laughs> I'm oh. going to make best friends with the employees there. Also, not that it's super relevant, but it's also a 10 minute walk from a casino. <laughs> not that I think I'll spend much time there, but just as a fun side note. <laughs> Great, now I know where all the money goes. Yeah, Bay Street TV closed the shop. <laughs> we went broke because we can gambled it all away. Yeah. Nah, the one time I've been to a casino, I got super excited and I went to a casino as soon as I turned 21 or whatever. Or was it 19 in Canada? I don't remember. Point is, as soon as I was of age, I went to the casino and it was super lame. Like, I actually did not enjoy my time. We wasted 20 bucks on slots. I ended up waiting half an hour to play like two hands of Texas Hold'em with some old ladies. I did not have a great time at a casino in my local town. I'm sure in Vegas or something, it's rocking and rolling, but... <laughs> Casinos here are not super impressive. But okay, folks, we are getting into game number three. You're watching the Corsair Cup semifinals. In the top right side of the map, we do have the light blue Terran player Keen. In the bottom left is the red Terran. He is alive. Now, Alive played that last game very well, I thought. It, part of it had to do with the proxies, but a lot of it had to do was actually not getting caught by Keen. If I was to compare the first game with the second game, the big thing I would point out was, like, in game one, Keen had a Marine everywhere on the map. He saw every attack coming before it hit, and he was prepared accordingly. That last game, because it was a proxy, and a lot of these attacks kind of came out of the shadows, he was like, what's going on? What do I do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it was certainly... Uh, I mean, that was game ending damage, whether or not Alive actually killed him like he did. Yeah. Oh, big thank you to Maximus freaking Black. Dude, Maximus, if you're listening to this, while Nate and I were playing H1Z1, one of his fans suggested you got, you play some time. We should do a group H1Z1, I'm just saying. I think it'd be a lot of fun. But thank you for that big-ass resub. And I think I can't go back through the logs. Someone someone donated the last game as the action was hitting too, right? Oh, that sounds familiar. There's clapping, I guess. Uh, Malax donated five dollars. You guys know what dopin is? Is it a team? It's a clan. So there's something more to it other than people in Korea need other people to talk to about the game and and maybe it's, practice. So the, 
the way I would equate this is because everyone knows about the whole like on fire thing with Scarlet and Neve and No Regret. Like that's not an official team. That's just kind of like their hangout. It's kind of the same thing with Dopin. Yeah. We don't really know how serious it is in any regard, except that a lot of Terrans are on it. So it kind of feels like the Terrans are just like vignetting together. Except I think they have like one for it also. <laughs> <laughs> they just chilling. And, uh, they chilling. And it would not surprise me at all if they did do this because even before uh, the whole Kespa thing happened, a lot of these guys weren't the forefront uh, of their teams actually playing and practicing in Pro League and probably wanted, you know, a place to do so. Well, yeah, but also <laughs> on that same note though, uh, Alive has been all over the place this year. Well, maybe he wasn't the forefront of anything before. This guy was kicking ass in GSL. Uh, the Elite League, the BTSL, now the Corsair Cup Finals, and I'm pretty sure he did well in IEM, although I didn't really follow those results. But the point is, Alive has been, like, the most the most active player this month, I feel. Yeah, probably. And it's 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 yielding very good results. Everyone's pretty excited to... Well, at least I'm excited to see, actually, that he finally gets a, a, the recognition, I suppose, the advances in GSL. But we do have a lot of Hellions for Alive, so this actually isn't a problem to deal with. Yeah. He's even gonna get a Reaper. Ah, almost, just... almost. Back at home, a Raven actually cooks up for Kane though, and I think this is really important because we did see the effectiveness of even just one or two auto turrets in game two, but uh, you know, it came too late, not quite enough. But yeah. I love, I love in chat. By the way, they say if casinos had subs instead of chips, Rifkin would never leave, and the answer to that is absolutely. I... Subways or subscribers? I think you mean sub subway, like sub sandwiches. Oh, okay. I would get the sub sampler, dude. Like bite size ham, bite size but like there's a chance BMT. That you could lose it all. Like, at what point are you allowed to eat it? Like, <laughs> I guess. You leave the casino? When you think about it, though, when you cash out money, you are just spending that in food and living. So you can eat that money too. And hookers. What? <laughs> what? Blackjack and hookers. <laughs> it's our own Bay Street TV. Exactly. Yeah, I went to casino. Well, I I've been to casinos after I was 21, but I. I went to Las Vegas three times, all before I was 21, so it was kind of a waste. Mm. Not, not worth. Oh, but so, there are the Hellions, and the Medivac does want to do a Hellion drop. Keen should be more aware of this. Like, what else do you have for Hellions? But is he in position? Almost. Oh, no, Medivac. Oh, what? How did that? That, that was nowhere near the cliff. Okay, well. Hellions do run in, a quick scatter out of Keen. And I do want to point out, Auto Turret will kill several of these uh, Hellions, but also the Viking will too. These are mechanical units after all, and those Vikings have that bonus damage, so 20. Yikes. Mm -hmm. That was we almost worth. Oh, oh. Well, oh. this is going to be a sieged up tank, and this won't be so easy to break this oh. time around. Four Marines. Uh, you know, he still has. Yeah, yeah he still has Auto Turrets. It's actually easy for you to break. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna actually pick up trick oh! oh man auto turret damage is crazy <laughs> hot pickup can't believe you risked that wow i i still like i know i know because we've seen it auto turrets do great damage but it's still surprising when you watch a tank melt like that you're just like oh cool yeah. instantly half health no big deal Something like 75 percent of the tank and more than half of the medevac just with two auto turrets like that's kind of extreme it's pretty good uh, Alive has all his upgrades a lot faster, and he is going for five barracks on two bases, so he's going to be the more aggressive one, even if he does eventually take a third. I think that makes sense like Cactus Valley, which still has complicated thirds to take. Not so much, I feel, when it comes to TVT, because you, you have the you know ability to drop everywhere. It's it's maps actually like Proxima Station that I think are more obnoxious to deal with yeah. against a Terran player for thirds, but the idea is still there, I think. You, know, you are going to be a little bit hesitant to take a third that's not easily you know gotten to protected that's the word <laughs> defended all those words well super hype keen uh maybe a little bit behind this game but alive's done a great job buying leads he's up 10 workers i love that he actually took the time to repair his medevacs but this is another game where maybe tech labs didn't die and barracks didn't go down but there is going to be a difference in tech and that's in those combat shields explicitly Again, I cannot begin to stress, like, I feel only Terran players understand this when I say it, but like, combat shields versus no combat shields. Tanks don't play as big of a factor as combat shields do in some of these engagements. Alive just straight up has gotten a lead from this earlier attack. Like, the Hellions didn't really seem to do a whole lot, but, I mean, he's 11 workers ahead, so clearly something went right for Alive in this game. I mean, he also got a faster command center, so that it's, it's all contributing, basically, and... Uh, Keen not taking any risks, you know, not going for like a really fast third base. 
is kind of just falling behind. You know, the combat shield is a huge deal, but he doesn't even have that much production compared to Alive and five barracks already. So he's got to do something or his his number is just going to start really dipping compared to Alive's. Well, trying to go for drops is not a bad move, but the problem with this is it is kind of risky because you don't know that Alive is versus isn't. Like if he had the Watchtower, like Keen that is, if Keen had the Watchtower and he knew that this army was coming, I don't think he would go for these drops. But at the same time, the drops will find Alive without much at home to defend with. Production's only just going to be kicking in. So there's some opportunity here for certain, but the risk is that he might take more damage than damage he can dish out. Mm. I mean, that drop, mm -hmm. by the way, if this just goes up to the main... Those tanks are out of position. There's uh, maybe oh, two yeah. auto turrets on that Raven. Alive is so... Well, Keen is so screwed. Uh, Alive would absolutely win the game if he knew that was a possibility. This attack is not so bad. I think Alive is going to have enough reinforcements. And it, again, with those combat shields, it's really not a problem at all. Keen goes in, he stims in, but it's instantly deflected. <laughs> combat shields is a hell of a thing. So is that tank shot. Now, I'm actually surprised Alive isn't trying to go to the main and at least push some positioning here. Even if it's just to kill the depots and get out. You know, remove some of that vision. But right now, just sitting here siege with tanks doesn't gain him any ground whatsoever. He might be thinking of just aiming for a soft contain, which is totally a viable option if he wants to take a third behind this, but he's actually pulling back. Yeah, he still has much better numbers. He's going to have faster plus one armor, even though he doesn't have the combat shield upgrade anymore. Faster third base, and he still has more production. Keen's only just getting his extra two barracks. Like In every single way, Alive is ahead in this game. And the fact that he didn't kill Keen right there is a missed opportunity, but it's not a deadly one. Ooh. Oh, unlucky. Speaking of deadly. Mm. Keen's got the two base all in, but that's not going to work. Yeah, this two is actually a complete role reversal of like what we saw in game one, where it was Alive who was forced to two base all in. That's true, but this is even worse. Keen has actually no chance. At least Alive had a bit of an army strategy. Yeah. This Thomas is Shields is done, but now that 1-1 one, right? one is going to be like the tipping factor here for Alive. And of course, uh, Keen's a little bit behind on getting his armor up. Yeah. Uh, Keen scans the wrong third base, so he might be thinking, I still have a shot here. Oh yeah, like my opponent might you be. Don't. I love that he's taking down the rocks, by the way, to go through the middle. Because it kind of looks like right now he was heading to wrap around the outside. But he scans Keen's tanks. He knows where they are. He is going to wrap around the outside. Just opening opportunities for himself to navigate through. Uh, the army's a little bit late, I guess. So that's why that 2-2 got delayed for alive. But he'll have that going here in a moment. He's got plenty of gas. And so normally gas is your limiting factor. So a bit awkward to be floating almost a 1,000. Yeah, a little bit awkward. So Keen's hope right now is to just turtle to max out, which is a very, very long ways away for him. Keen is 140, alive is a 181, with production is going to be maxing out in the next minutes. Keen has, I guess, air control, technically, but if it's not in position, then it doesn't matter uh -oh. if it's not. That is such a doom drop, too. This isn't a couple of units. Even with these Marines just ready to intercept, them, yeah. yeah, you just drop on them and don't give a good gush, darn. That's so much army in the main. Vikings and the Ravens not going to help out too much. And this just obliterates Keen. The tanks defensively oh, at the top Keen. aren't even sieged up. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, only one of them was. Now they're sieged up, but... Uh, okay, I'm probably going to get a concave. But it's, so, it's killing production, and this is real damage to a Terran player. This isn't like, oh, I barely killed a couple of depots and got out. Like You killed a barracks or two. You're going to kill another barracks on your way out of this. Like This kills so much production for Keen. He's going to attack the third now, which was an obvious gimme. Uh, oh, and he's going to try and break out. That's not going to work. Mm, he runs into oh, the tanks God. and eats up a lot of that damage. Meanwhile, that big push comes into the natural. And there's still two tanks down here, granted, but third base under attack by one tank, one marine. <laughs> this drop still hasn't been cleaned up. And I think alive, it's it's very safe to say at this point that I think he's got okay, this there's, game. There's the scans, and he finally scans the correct third base. GG. GG. All right, so nice lead now for Alive, but again, best of five. Also, we didn't really talk about it, but there's prize money already up for grabs right now. Uh, anyone playing in the semifinals, all four players are guaranteed at least $50. I don't know. That was actually, I think because my camera's backwards, it's like 05, 50, what? $50 is my point, though, for fourth and third place finishes in the Corsair Cup, $100 for second place, and $200 for first. So, there's a fair amount of money on the line for this, but at the very least, whoever loses still walks away with some cash. Yeah, that's uh, that's always nice. 
but now I go scroll through chat. It is actually really tough reading, like, considering I normally have a whole monitor dedicated to this, trying to read it on my phone. <laughs> By the way, does your phone still have the G-Star thing stuck to the back of it? I can't get it off. No, I put it on the case, which was fabric, so it was ripping off, like, very early. And then I got a new case. So. Uh, yeah, I need to scratch this off with some vinegar or something. I can't... Like, you I guys thought can... you wanted to keep it as, like, a memento. I did until it started fading, and now just I've got a white spot on the back of my phone that doesn't even say G-Star anymore. It's got, like, a half of a star. It says staff, oh, and then... I, I figured it backfire <laughs> on you somehow. I had, I had good ideas and intentions, Okay. It's going to be Belshir next. Emil is really paranoid about being left out, I think. Should be. Joining. <laughs> that lousy Polish caster. Jeez. Be, right? Can't even get in the chat channel. Like, Of course he should feel paranoid about that. <laughs> That's true. He's probably like, they don't have a chat channel, man. Like, oh my god, I'm going to be left out. Like, we don't use the same chat channel for everything. I know, right? Like, <laughs> Literally everything. Well, Belshir was picked. All right. So Belshir Vestige from map number uh, four. Right? Correct. Okay, four, map number four, nailing it. <laughs> That's right, two, one, this would be four, of course. I can do math. But uh, yeah, countdown's begun. So let's just hop into the game screen and get into the match. Yeah. Yeah. I miss having map intros with all this dead silence. Yeah, well, we'll have them soon enough, okay? Get off my back, Mom. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> no, I actually... Oh, I do need to poke Tempo today, though, and see if he's recorded the uh, that one, at least. But yeah, some people were asking earlier about the Cactus Valley intro, why we weren't playing it. Again, we're leaving the current YouTube network we're on, and the music is licensed through them, so we can't keep using it going forward because it'll just get things muted as we don't have the appropriate rights to play it. So there will be the Cactus Valley intro, and I'm hoping to find some equally goofy music. But that's that. It's game number four. In the bottom right, he's on his last life looking to bring this back. It's the Red Terran Keen. In the top left, as the blue Terran, he is alive. Oh, by the way, uh, pretty much everybody that we were talking about last night just confirmed their invites for the European and Korean groups for Ting. Oh my god. Obama's coming to the party? <laughs> yeah, and Trump, if you can believe it. I thought, <gasps> no way both of them would be in the same both room. Both in the same room? God, I hope they don't wear the same dress. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, I bring this up because Keen was one of the folks we decided to invite back based on his performance in the qualifiers, and uh, I'm really excited to get those groups posted up a little bit later today, because uh, the live also qualified through, and he'll be playing as, as well. Yeah, we got a lot of good groups, and we managed to round out the races. I would love if someone actually, because we cast so many matches with so many different players, if someone was able to like, construct this very elaborate best of, like, 47 or something that came from just like stitching all the games together <laughs> that's not we i feel like we've been asking a lot of our fans lately have like, we though uh, well okay there's this that we asked them that like one rabbit fan should do and there was a time we said uh someone should go back and see how many hours of casting we've ever done for the last like four years <laughs> That would be quite a lot. Whoa! Holy guacamole! Oh what in the... If only I had a Corsair keyboard, wouldn't be... Oh, shit. <laughs> Can you get the rest of that? Just... I don't have a browser. Oh, oh, I was like, why are you stopping? It's embarrassing. If only I had a Corsair keyboard, wouldn't always be mistyping during cheering. And then 10,000 bits, 10,000 bits, 1,000 bits, 1,000 bits, 100, 100, 10, 10, 1, 1. Did that, wait, did that, did that just, did that dethrone Therminators? It did. I think that's why he did it. It's 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Oh, my God. Mother of God. Dude, thank you so Was that Maroon Pirate? Was that who that was? Yes, that was Maroon Pirate. Maroon Pirate. Can we take a moment? If you guys got some Tasia claps, throw them in chat. If you got some hearts, use those hearts instead. But Maroon Pilot, or Pirate, excuse me. Wow, that was some English. Maroon Pirate, for those who don't know, just basically donated $200. And a uh, little bit more than that, even. I'm gonna talk about this game. Yeah, like, I guess. We could. Lose. He went for a Hellion for the Cyclone. 
Yeah, and he's losing this fight pretty badly. Cyclone's on the way. If he can kill that Hellion and get that second Reaper, the one Reaper won't be devastating, but he focuses on the wrong one. Oh, Marine. Oh, a couple of SCVs pulled. They barely can't kill that. Another Hellion comes through. Reapers, if they're going to gain I any think, health here, they I, could have. I think oh. he'll be okay. Okay, considering he's going to lose some SCVs for this. No, okay. GG. Wow, wow, the Cyclone was so close. It happened in so long. God. Look at the Cyclone timing. Like, I'm surprised that was a tap out, to be honest. Well, sorry to interrupt the shout outs. We can go back to it now. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, Maroon Pirate Man, thank you. Again, that's a little over $200 he just gave the channel guy. That's, th guys, that's, that's phenomenal. That's fucking generous is what that is. So thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, I will say we we have some stuff in play where you might be able to get some Corsair stuff. Just stay tuned to the channel for the next couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, so Corsair, I'll say this straight up, guys. They've offered to give us a bunch of cool equipment to give away to the fans. But because I'm moving and Zombie Group at the time was in France, we didn't really have... A place for them to ship that stuff to so after we're done getting situated my new place or maybe we'll send it to zombie grub we can start doing giveaways again which i've been really looking forward to and zombie grub can confirm like every time we've had a meeting with these guys i've been asking like so when are we gonna get some gear like when can i give our fans some corsair stuff right like so sure. uh that's gonna be awesome anyways game number five comes up in just a moment uh we'll play a quick commercial break before we get there paladino terminal will be the final destination and we'll see you guys in two minutes all right, folks, we're back. Thank you for watching that quick commercial break. Again, I, I'm i still enamored by Maroon Pirate's generosity. Thank you so much for that, dude. But it is game number five in the semifinals. Ladies and gentlemen, in the top left side of the map. Oops, wrong side of the overlay. There we go. It's going to be the red Terran player alive. In the bottom right is the blue Terran. He is keen. All right, so Keen had a great comeback through, I'm gonna just, more than anything else, say timing. Like if, <sighs> that move we've talked about many times in casting TVT and rarely does it end games anymore. I would say actually rewind time like a year ago and that was like a very prominent and common thing to see. But the yeah. Hellions and the Reaper, usually like you've just barely got your Cyclone out or you've got your own defenses ready to go. I'm sure Alive's kicking himself in the butt for not having gone for the Cyclone first. But I'm still, like, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm more okay with Snoot having left his game than I was like with K Alive losing that, leaving that game. I just feel, I feel like he has a command center finishing up any second. He had the Cyclone about to pop. I understand why he left. I just don't agree with the choice too. I didn't really get a good look at the numbers. I, I knew he was starting to go below that of Keen, but it wasn't terrible, I didn't think yet. I imagine he just figured he wouldn't be able to afford to defend the follow-up. Because if it's Banshee follow-up, which it was, then the Cyclone's been enough, and he can't afford it in June Bay in a missile turret. But I, I don't know. But, um, there's certainly, that's certainly a game that you can come back from, but he really thought it snowballed too much and just wanted to get over it as quickly as possible. So. It happens. Everyone gets proxy three racks. Everyone gets, you know, the supply depot not raised. Everyone is micros and uh, alive. Apparently, it's together. So they cut ties of the game to try and, and work through. It. Yeah, uh, I just want to dispel some trolling in chat though, because it seems like a couple of our subs agree with this guy. Uh, when I said that, like we couldn't. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure where the logic falls into this, where, like, because I was moving, somehow we were keeping all of this gear for ourselves. Like, Zombie Grub and I are not elite hackers using five keyboards each, all Corsair branded with three headsets on Tasia style, right? Like, we actually just had nowhere to ship the equipment to. So, it had nothing to do with us being greedy and keeping stuff for ourselves. We love giving stuff away to our fans. We've done that at every opportunity possible. Look at the... We did so many giveaways through December and November especially, so again, I just wanted to spell that because it hurts actually a little bit to hear things like that. We're not, I would say like of all the people doing this, we are some of the least greedy and I'm proud of that, which is why I'm responding to this instead of ignoring it. It seems so absurd that I, I don't know if like, oh, a new sub. Thanks to Wim85. Whoop whoop. I'm Okay, so one base versus one base. It is Paladino Terminal, and anything else is a little too risky. Uh, one Reaper comes across the map, we build a command center, and that command Set. center is not going to finish. Uh, I assume this was. Aliens, I assume this bad. is going to be Ravens, by the way. Like it's just, it's, I'd say it's more common nowadays to see a Raven into a Banshee than Banshees into Ravens, but. Sure. 
Banshee opener out of Alive. It is, but it is not still uncommon to see at least the first Banshee. When it's second, third Banshees into a Liberator, and that's like heavily delays all your gas based uh, tech and uh, medivacs, that's when I'm like, I don't know if that's really worth it. And Alive has done that before. He's gone to like third oh. Banshees and it doesn't work. This isn't a wall, by the way. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit no, awkward. No, it's a fake wall. It's that new age Feng Shui faux wall. Yeah, well, he's got a cyclone on the way out and more marines. Uh, the scariest thing is getting hit by that widow mine for sure. Like I'm all grounding it, so that does too much damage. Yeah, he doesn't have cloak yet either, so he's trying to play really safe with that banshee. I mean, if you throw the grenade down, he might just get it. No, t he needs one more shot. That's a big problem. He's trying to bait the hit. Unfortunately, he's going to go off on the Cyclone. That's not something he wants it to go off on. He needs to repair uh, that very, very badly. He should still have enough. I think this is enough time bought just by, you know, positioning and preparing. Oh. And it's, it's all good. Wait, the Reaper died. Now he can't kill the, uh... Well, the Raven will pop, actually. So oh, no! Oh, this is a... That. Oh, this oh, is a problem. No. This is a oh, big wow. problem. Wow. Is he going to win with this with Micro? Like, the Alt is going to come out, and that should actually combo kill both these units, even before they can run away. Well, Wait, it needs out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not. Oh my god. He's also got that Widow Mine to still deal with, by the way. This is getting too much. Other side of the map, the Banshee gets shut down. Ow. There's no counter damage done. What? See, picked up the Cyclone again. Okay, well, here, Command Center at least should finish. Oh, oh, there we go. It should finish. So he'll not be super behind in that regard, but. Oh! That gave me a heart attack. Uh, but this was certainly a lot more damage done by Kane than I expected. I thought Alive had the tools necessary to stop this from getting out of hand, and it still got really out of hand. He absolutely would have had he repaired the Cyclone as fast as possible. Like, that that would have been no problem killing the other two units and then forcing the meta back away. So, uh, that was, you know, something you usually don't... Because you think you do have enough, even if your army is injured, but that clearly wasn't the case. So, he definitely regretted not doing that. It's, it totally snowballed. Keen has his commands that are already on location. He's up uh, in workers, up in army, and in fact, is attacking already with a cyclone that he saved. I mean, it's like one health, but a damn, that's adding it's, something. It's extra damage. As we can see, Pretty all you need is a little bit. Auto turret fights are a little bit funny to see, but Keen's going to pull back for the moments. I mean, Alive yeah. really is scraping the bottom of the barrel, the cyclone. bottom of the peanut butter jar, if you will, to get these units to fight with. The fucking cyclone is still alive! <laughs> I know, this is amazing. Oh, oh no! Oh. It's Again. at 12 kills, by the way. I just really want to emphasize that Cyclone is at 12 kills. The Cyclone is a reason Oh, my God. Lose. Are both of, them, both, of them both of them? Both of them live. Both of them live. Keen <laughs> takes the series 3-2, to two, and he'll move on to the grand finals. But I... Okay, so here's the thing. that If you think about this, right, the Cyclones have projectiles, so... Technically, you could juke them the same way you would a stalker shot, but they fire a million shots a second, and they have like a one, like a point second travel speed, like that. Just to really exclaim how powerful that pickup micro was. That wasn't like luck. That was super sick out of Keen. That was. That was not what I expected from Keen. I know he's good, but like that was the first time I really have been astonished by his micro. <laughs> All right. So next up is uh, what Neeb versus who? Sort of. Neeb versus Sorta for the other semifinals. It's still going to be a best of five, but now we go travel back to Europe and we'll get the games hosted up over there. It's going to be a brand new best of five. We'll get this going ASAP. Stick around, guys. We'll see you in two minutes. Thanks for watching.